Hi, here we are for the lesson five of the kindergarten technology curriculum from Structured Learning. I'm your guide. My name is Jackie Murray. I'm with Ask a Tech Teacher and I'll guide you through all 32 of these lessons in kindergarten. I'm also the one you'll probably get answers from if you go to our, our wiki and the discussion board there and you post a question about something that didn't make sense or I went through it too fast for you. Um, I'm probably the one that'll answer you with um, those two. So, so we'll get to be good friends throughout this 32 weeks. Lesson five is on tools, toolbars, and symbols. These are very general topics in um, learning. Lots of symbols represent other things. Lots of tools and toolbars tell students what to get done in a variety of things besides technology, but they're especially prevalent in technology. It's a great way to reinforce this subject with early learners is by showing them how the tools on a toolbar, the tasks on the taskbar at the bottom of your screen, um, not so much menu bars because those are words, but tools and toolbars are, are, the symbols are the same throughout. It's not like words where you read a word like you read the word tools, toolbars, and symbols. Well, if you don't speak English, you don't understand what that means. To symbols and tools, the icons for tools are, are across all languages. They tend to be like this little hand here tends to mean the same thing regardless of your language. The arrow there, the up and down, these things mean the same thing regardless of the language you're speaking. So this is a really valuable lesson and really useful for students to start to understand these. So we've got some vocabulary here, numlock. I don't know if they'll understand that. We get into numlock because numbers are symbols. Um, taskbar, toolbars, tools, web-based icon, those little pictures that represent things that this is an icon, this is an icon. Those I icons, um, sometimes they represent click to start a program, sometimes they represent click to perform a function. So, um, and, and you'll want to get students used to using these words. Problem solving, a lot of the same ones we are still talking about with kindergartners. They're only five weeks into this, so we want to reinforce that they're learning how to solve hardware-based problems. Um, the, the general startup problems for computers, how to log on, how to open a program, how to close it, monitor, these are the hardware ones. Um, and then specific to the program, the drawing program won't allow saving. Well, that's a pretty difficult problem, but no time like kindergarten to learn what you do then. You take a screenshot. Most digital devices have a native way of taking a screenshot, and we'll get into those in these in, in here. You'll have a list in the book of them, and so will your students. So um, when you get, if you get to a point where to save a picture in KidPix or TuxPaint or something like that, they, they need to, um, they can't figure out how to save it. Rather than you go in and do it for them, show them how to take a screenshot. So they always have an option to, I can't figure out how to save it. Well, no problem. I'll do a screenshot. Can't find a tool. Well, there's... Um, Look on the toolbars. The toolbars are all over the place. In this one, we have a toolbar up here. We have a toolbar over here. In um, other programs, you'll find them lots of places. Another one is short keys. Now, kindergartners don't know too many short keys yet. So bring that one up if, you, if it, it, it applies to your group. Their skills, your scaffolding, mouse skills, care of the digital devices, hardware problems, login. But they have some new ones here. So um, symbols, tools, the tools and toolbars that they are across all platforms, being a good digital citizenship, what the heck's an icon, using their drawing program. Now they, they might have used it before, but they'll use drawing programs a lot in this curriculum and in future years. Okay, essential question, how can the program layout help me communicate my message? Tools, toolbars, wherever they are, they're usually there to help communicate. Um, computer programs have similar tools and toolbar. This makes technology easier to learn. You could not possibly teach students every program out there. So you don't teach them the program. You teach them how to teach themselves. And that's tools, toolbars, and symbols. 
Okay, preparation. Um, make sure you have the drawing program. Uh, talk with the grade level team to see if there's something drawing related that you could draw that ties in with their inquiry. Um, for these first five or ten lessons, it's really good to have parent helpers. So don't forget that. Try to line that up. It makes it a lot easier. And parents usually aren't intimidated by a topic like this. They're facile enough with technology that this will not bother them at all. Um, okay, and then these are the same ones we typically have. So just always be prepared with those. Same with the assessment. These are pretty typical of ways you can assess this lesson. I don't think I'm throwing anything new at you. Anecdotal observation, we don't always point that out, but it's probably always a good idea or always an option for assessment is just anecdotally observe what students are doing. Okay, so class warm up, um, when the students come in, have them show their neighbor how to hold the mouse and vice versa. So that, that'll take a couple minutes or they can go on both sides of them and show them and make sure they're doing it the right way. If you need to have the, the mouse hold picture, and I don't think it's in this lesson, it's probably in a previous one, have it up on your class screen or tell students where it is in their student workbooks and make sure that they're doing it right. Okay, you're going to review how to take care of the computer, review hardware problems before you start. You do a little bit of review just so that these things keep wrapping around each other. Then by the end of the year, they definitely have these topics. Okay, tools, toolbars, and symbols. Symbols, what are they? So discuss that with them. Um, the they undoubtedly use symbols in their classrooms. They um, have these symbols they're probably using. Maybe not the Roman numerals, but those, maybe they are. So there you go. And there's these. And the math symbols. And then there's symbols. If you say birthday, what's the first thing they think of? Maybe it's balloons. That, so if you see balloons, what do you, it, do you think of birthday first? If you see a flag, what do you think of first? That's what makes these a symbol for something. So they're very good at communicating. If you have a, a specific idea you want to communicate, you use the symbol that evokes that in people's minds. Rudolph, well, that's Christmas. So go through those with them. Those are symbols. And you might, you might have other things. You might have a whole lesson going on in kindergarten about symbols. Or you might be able to, they had one, and now you're reinforcing that a couple weeks later. So very good to do. Then the toolbars, okay, so they haven't done a lot of technology yet. They're only in their fifth, fifth week. So open a program that they're going to be using, and then show them the tools and the toolbars. Show them the symbols. Show them how that A is typical across all sorts of different programs. Here's my paint toolbar. This one's in ABC a paint. This is in KidPix. So what's similar? There's an ABC, and this has an A somewhere on it. I can't find it. Oh, there it is, right there. And this one has it. So th that's a pretty trans, uh, a, a pretty good symbol for going across lots of different programs. So use open the program that they're using and have them point out some of these symbols, these tools, and, and guess what they mean. They might have used them before, maybe not, but they're just guessing. This is the taskbar from the bottom. So bring that up. It is a tool toolbar. It's a taskbar different name, but have them, it, it also uses symbols at the bottom to show what tasks are open. All right, and I think that's about it. So then if you've got time, go into, and, and the students are working on their letters, then these are some really good websites to work on letters, which are symbols of writing. Their exit ticket is um, to show their neighbor five tools from a toolbar in one of the programs they opened, whether it be an online tool or, or a software tool that they're using. So five tools and what they guess that they mean, even if they don't have to have even tried them and you don't want them to try them. You don't want them to go up there and say, okay, I'm going to click on that and see what it does or that and see what it does. So you want to guess. Now, if you notice, and I don't know, point it out to them or not, but if you hover over these, you're going to get a tool tip. So they could actually, if they're advanced readers read and see what those do. Okay, and let's see what we have in their workbook. Bigger image of the hardware problems. So this way if you're asking them about hardware problems, they've got it right in front of them in their 
workbook, but that's okay because what they're learning then is how to find answers to problems. And eventually they will know these without having to look it up. So it's really okay if they look it up in their workbook as long as they do it quickly. I'm looking. I don't see anything else. There's more alphabet websites, a lot more than you had in your book. And these, of course, are links. So they could just click on those and pick them by the picture. Down here, take their notes. And remember, their note taking is over here with fill and sign. So if they, if they want to make a special note about something over here or draw a picture that's a note, that's fine. I think that's it. All right, guys. I look forward to seeing you on our wiki. Um, add a discussion topic. I'd love to talk to you about it. Have a great week, and I'll talk to you soon. Bye.